Do you know what source maps are in web development? Well, source maps kind of look like this. It's a file with a whole lot of stuff. The benefit of this is for debugging your application in production. In this video, I'll be able to understand what source maps are and how useful they are when building applications. Source maps are files that are created with module bundlers like Webpack, Vit, or the rest. And the purpose of these files is to create a link between your development code and your production code so that you can easily debug your applications during production. So here I have this React code and don't worry if you're not a React person, it's just a simple example here. I have this button which when you click is going to call this function update states and we'll call this function, this is going to call set team and then this is going to throw an error here. Now I'm manually throwing an error but just imagine that something goes wrong in your application. When we click on this button, the team is going to become dark. When I click on it, you see we now have team is dark, but then this true error is triggered. So we have an error here. Now what you see in this error is that it is pointing to app.js line 14, of which when I click, you can see it takes us to app.js line 14. While developing my application, I can see where an error is coming from. I can go to my app.js here and I can see, okay, the error is coming from this line and then I can fix that error. Now, this is the development version of my code. But what if I generate a production version of my code? So here, I'm going to run npm run build. Okay, now we have the build version of my code which if I should open my file explorer here and we go to the build directory, you can see that here some things have been bundled together. So in this static, I have CSS and here I have JavaScript. Now what you notice in this JavaScript is we have main dot this id dot js and then we have main dot this id dot js dot map now this is a source map and i'll come to that in a second we actually have the same for css we have main dot this id dot css and main dot this id dot css dot map now the same concept apply but let's focus on the javascript part now if i open this javascript file what we're going to see is this whole stuff where everything is minified and bundled together in different ways and this depends on the build tool that you're using so if you're using webpack it might bundle your file in a different way if you're using other module bundlers it might bundle things in a different ways but what we have here is all our react code is bundled into this one file and just to clarify what the bundling does you know when you're working on development you have maybe a css framework like sas or or maybe you are using a framework like react or maybe you are using typescript now the browser doesn't understand some of these things so your module bundler is going to bundle all of these things together to javascript or css that your browser understands and that is going to be your production code everything has been bundled together to this one file and also some of the spaces are removed so that the file size of this bundle is going to be smaller which can improve the performance of your application so this is the bundle javascript file and if we should go to index.html here you see that even the index.html is minified to one line but i can format this so that it breaks to multiple lines you can see that the script here points to static slash js slash main dot this id dot js which is this here so this is actually what the browser is going to fetch when you open index.html so now in my terminal i'm going to run the build version which is the production code on a local server so i have the serve package globally installed and i can say serve build so now on localhost this we have the build version of this code here if i come to this console again now and i click on this you see we still get that error that is thrown and that error is coming from app.js line 14 of which if i click on this it's going to show this but then how does the dev tools know that this error is coming from app.js line 14 because in index.html this script is pointing to static slash js slash this which is this so how did the browser dev tools know that the error is coming from app.js when this is actually our development code and not our production code well that is because of this source map that was created here this source map which contains a bunch of things creates a map between app.js the development code 
and this production code here. And I can show you how because at the bottom of this JavaScript file, what you see is we have source mapping URL pointing to this map here. Now, if I should come here and let's say I change the name of this file to something. Now, this JavaScript will not be able to point to this map anymore. And if I should come here now and I refresh and I click this button and an error is thrown, you can see that the error is coming from main.thisid.js line 2. And if I should open this file, you can see this is what it looks like. This looks nothing like our app.js because this error is coming from this main.something.js. And actually, if I should also format this so that I can read it a bit and I should look for new error something, yeah, you can see that this is the line that the error is coming from. Now, obviously, this file is again bundled and minified, so it will be very hard to debug this kind of file when an error is thrown in your application because this contains a lot of things coming from react coming from all the tools necessary to bundle your code so it would be difficult for us to debug things like this when this is our development code but then this is our production code and that is why this map would help you create that link between the development mode code and the production code also in this map if I should format it so that I can read it better, I can also search for new error something. And you can see this is where it is. Now, maybe in a different file, I would go into the details of how these maps are created. But you can see that we have this line here, which actually looks like what we have in app.js. So now if I should go back to this map and I rename this something to main.this.js.map, now, after running npm run build again and serving the application, going to the console, when I click on this, instead of the browser to use the main.id.js for errors, it can actually point to our development code. And we know this error is coming from here. So in our development code, we know that this is where we need to fix the error, or at least this is a hint. And depending on the build tool that you're using, you can configure your source maps in different ways. For example, Webpack provides this dev tool option that allows you to control if and how source maps are created. And Vit also provides this build.sourcemap option, which allows you to generate production source maps. Now, if you've been building applications with different frameworks, you've probably never had to worry about source maps because these frameworks were creating the source maps for you. Well, now, if you're asked in an interview what source maps are, or if you have been curious how your browser is able to link to your development code, I hope this video provides an answer for you. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, share with others, and also subscribe for more web development topics like this.